Doctor, do you agree that if that actually happened, that would be a violation of the standard of care? Do you agree with that? Would you like to learn what this is about? Come join me as I share with you this great information. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury trial attorney practicing law here in the state of New York. When I'm questioning a doctor at his question and answer session, which is pretrial testimony known as a deposition or an examination before trial, I have the opportunity to ask the doctor hypothetical questions. And then I have the opportunity to ask the doctor that if certain things did in fact happen, would you agree that that would be a violation of the standard of care? Or another phrase is, would you agree it would be a departure from the standard of care? And the doctor either has to agree or disagree. Let me share with you one question and answer session that I had not too long ago where I'm asking the doctor a hypothetical question. I said, doctor, I want you to assume the following facts to be true. And assuming all of those facts to be true, and by the way, this is based upon my client's testimony and the records, so I had a definite basis upon which to ask the doctor these questions. I said, if all of these facts are true, would you then agree that doing that would be a departure, would be a violation of the standard of care? And what did the doctor say? The doctor argued with me about the phrasing, about the wording of the sentence. He said, I can't assume anything in your question because I know what the facts are. Rather than argue with the doctor, I simply ask the question again. And now I would rephrase the question, change it up a little bit, and I would ask it again and again. And the doctor refused to acknowledge the fact that I could ask a hypothetical question to the point where his attorney, the defense attorney, turns to the doctor and says, doctor, you have to make the assumption that what he's saying is correct for the purposes of this question. So just answer the question. And if the doctor had simply answered me yes or no, then we could then move on to the next question. In a medical malpractice case, I am fully entitled to ask the doctor hypothetical questions, provided, of course, I have a legal basis, a good faith basis to do so. And I did. So there was no issue about that at all. But it was ironic that the doctor simply would not accept the fact that I was asking him a hypothetical question. The use of a hypothetical question is extremely important. Why? Because now at trial, I can ask the doctor the same exact question. And now, again, if he starts to argue with me, the jury will really get incensed. They'll get upset because he's not answering the question. And the judge will even turn around and tell him, doctor, you have to answer the question. And here's why we ask the hypothetical question. If the facts turn out to be true the way we have been describing them in the hypothetical, now what has happened is that the doctor has literally agreed with our position. The doctor has agreed that there's a violation of the standard of care. And now the jury can take that information and move on to the next question. Was there a departure? Yes. Did that departure cause and contribute to the injuries? Yes or no. And if the answer is yes, then they have to go on and evaluate how much compensation to award to you, the injured victim. So it's critical to ask hypothetical questions during these pretrial testimony questions known as a deposition. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding to what goes on in the litigation process in a medical malpractice case here in the state of New York. You know, I realize that you're watching this because you have questions of your own. Well, if you do have legal questions, what I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. This is something I do every single day and I welcome your call. You can reach me at 516 487 8207 or by email at jerry, G E R R Y, at oginski law.com. Well, that's it for today's quick video. I'm Jerry Oginski coming to you from New York. Have a wonderful day.